love and care for one another. If we do not reach to that point, I think this week will once again pass without making any difference in our spiritual journey. But this whole celebration will be more and more meaningful if it enables us to take the first step of a little more being lovable. In 1926, a courageous decision was made to build a Catholic elementary school and church in Bay St. Louis, specifically to serve African Americans. In the 82 years since, St. Rose de Lima braved the winds of Camille and waters of Katrina. Most important, it survived the violent storm of racial strife in the Deep South. We felt ownership here. I think it was a wonderful experience for all of us who had the opportunity to attend school and church here and, and not feel the prejudice and not feel that, that uh, we had to sit in the back of a church because we, we had our own. Leading the way for the church was the Society of the Divine Word, at the time the only order of priests in America dedicated to training African Americans for life in the church. Because nowhere in the country, you know, African American men could go to be trained to be a priest or to be a religious brother. So that was our main focus down here, open up a seminary, then eventually also to take care of the pastoral needs of the African Americans in this, wherever we worked. So that is our focus. Almighty, ever-living God, you have given the human race, Jesus Christ, our Savior. I came to St. Rose in June 2001. Okay. I had arrived in this country in uh, August 1999. First two years I was in uh, uh, New Iberia, Louisiana, and then was assigned here as pastor. I had come several times to the Bay, you know, Bay Area and also had visited the church and liked the entire atmosphere. I had not celebrated a mass prior to coming here, but I, you know, looking at the church, the mural and the whole atmosphere was beautiful. Led by Father Ken Hamilton, St. Rose underwent a physical transformation during the 1980s. The centerpiece of the beautification project is a mural depicting Jesus over the native live oak. Father Ken Hamilton came to St. Rose and he had a vision for us that we might be able to step into the 21st century as fully empowered, strong Christian people. And he thought that one of the first places to start would be to look at the art and to create a, a fresh and new piece of art that would reflect where we were. Parishioner Kat Fitzpatrick worked as assistant to New Orleans-based artist Alzaklitz Ozols. Father Ken first approached me about doing the mural and I felt it was just so amazing and so grand that I passed it off. It was just humbling. So I contacted Alcyclus, but Alcyclus really was the major artist. I was his handmaid. I helped, I passed the, the paint to him, cleaned the brushes and worked on small parts of it, but it's really his vision. My children who were then five and 11 years old, uh, had their birthdays while Alcyclus was painting the mural and I was helping. And so he gave them a paintbrush and told them to, to make some leaves. And so he came around and outlined them afterwards. And he said, you can bring your grandchildren and show them this is the part of the mural that you created. I'm still moved by this thing. It never gets old. As Katrina approached Bay St. Louis, Father Sebastian was not sure if he should abandon his church or not. There is actually the sacramentary, the, the prayer book. There's a section called to avert the storm, a prayer. So I said the prayer from that, that section and then decided to go and stay at St. Augustine Seminary because that is a much more sturdy building and higher grounds. 
So it was only the next day that I was able to come to St. Louis. And in some ways, I was prepared to see the worst. Because St. Augustine Seminary, as it is, that area is the highest ground in this, you know, based on Louis. And if that had about four feet of water, you know. So one of my parishioners' son had a four-wheeler he got from Cost Electric. So three, four of us had a, you know, got in a trailer and tied to that, and we climbed over the tree somehow and got managed to come here. And from far, I saw the steeple standing, and I said, thank God, you know. So coming this side, of course, the windows were all blown into, and uh, the door wasn't that. I could use my key to open that. Amazing, there was, of course, wind damage and water came through the roof, but there was absolutely no drop of water from halfway of the church to the sanctuary area. The mural was intact and all those things. And as I walked up onto the altar, it was like, I looked at that page that I had left open, the sacramentary, to avert the storm. That page was still open there. But it was like, I just knelt down and thanked God. Katrina's eye passed through Hancock County, causing devastation unequaled in American history. In the chaotic days following, St. Rose stepped to the forefront of the recovery effort. This place was a place of refuge for those who suffered. We became a distribution center. We became that place, uh, that Walmart. We became that grocery store that, uh, where whatever they needed, the people came to St. Rose. I remember coming here on the Sunday that followed Katrina, and we were in our mud-splattered clothes. No one had anything. We were just in the clothes we'd wear all week. Um, many of our houses had been destroyed, but we came together in one of the only churches that survived in this area and was ready to be open to welcome people. The building process has started now uh, when the, the volunteers would come and Right here, we, we housed and fed a lot of the volunteers who came through and that same group of volunteers and replenishing every now and then, they came, they helped to revitalize, they helped to rebuild. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer with one another the gift of Christ's peace. St. Rose de Lima remains an important center for the revitalization of the community, becoming involved in hundreds of rebuilding projects to date. Of far greater import, the church continues to serve the spiritual needs of visitors and locals alike as they rebuild Hancock County together. They teach love. They tell us that if we don't see Jesus in the next person, then we've missed a boat. And we have learned that Loving one another is the, is the thing to do, and to stretch out our arms to greet anyone and everyone who comes here. Just as we see on that mural with Jesus' arms out, that's, I think that's, that's how much he loved us, and that's how much we have to love everybody else as well. Yeah, you're doing all right? Thank you. Even. Four, break four. I did them wrong.